Hey everyone, I'm Rich. So if you've been following up on the channel lately, you'll know that I picked up the new PS5 Slim and have difficulty playing it on my main monitor as the PS5 doesn't support ultra wide. I have ample desk space available on my secondary table as well, so I like to make good use of that. I was on the market for a monitor that had 4K capabilities and supported a high refresh rate. If I could find one that had included speakers, maybe throw in some HDR and a cool design, I'll take that as a bonus too. So after searching online, I found the BenQ EX3210U, which is from their Mobius gaming monitor lineups, and it looked pretty promising. I had it shipped in, and I want to take you guys through my unboxing experience. This was a pretty huge box, and weighed in at around 31 pounds or 14 kilograms. I had to carefully place it on the table, as the instructions said to open it laying down. I think the packing seemed very organized. I saw the instruction manual, the stand, and included was a remote, some extra cables, and finally, the monitor herself. Upon unraveling this, it was pretty heavy for a monitor, a little delicate, but felt very well built. I brought this over to my shooting table where I typically capture the majority of my product shots and installing the pole took just a single screw. The monitor snapped onto the stand super easily and I was ready to go. Alright, so I just want to take a moment and just look at this monitor. First off, I think the design is super, super sick. The red, white, and black color scheme definitely matches the PS5 Slim uh, and the Red Bull fridge in the back, so I really like that. And if you're trying to build a setup around this color scheme, I think this is the way to go. Also, don't worry about the glare coming off of the monitor. I just have two really bright lights that's shining right at it, so I'm trying to make it look good for y'all. But yeah, it's pretty big. I mean, for comparison, this is the HP 34-inch ultra-wide monitor, so it's pretty long and skinny. So yeah, I just want to take a moment and show you guys the design, and soon we're going to hook it up, power it on, and see what the gaming performance looks like. Upon first glance, you'll notice this monitor has very nice and angular designs. Coming in at 32 inches, it took up a lot of space on my desk. It's massive and sturdy. The sheer size and heft of the BenQ EX3210U isn't for everyone. I see that has a thick bottom bezel, which is where the two watt speakers are coming out of, and a sensor in the middle. The BenQ logo is subtly imprinted on the left, and on the right it's an HDRI button to toggle between the modes. Other than the bottom bezels, the rest of them are pretty thin, and going towards the back you have this huge rear panel painted in white with some more protruding angles and divots. I also see the Travolo 5W subwoofer in the rear, which sound will most likely bounce off the wall and come forward while you game. I do want to show you a test of the sound quality soon, but yeah, pretty much it's a design that some people may or may not like. I personally like this, it looks pretty gamery like and yes, matches the aesthetic of my desk setup nicely. The stand is pretty much the focal point of the setup though. It looks somewhat futuristic and sharp. I like the red accent along the inner bars and they have some nice texture to them as well. It sits pretty sturdy so I wouldn't worry about this monitor wobbling. There was a decent amount of adjusting room to move it up and down or to the side which I really appreciate. And the cutout to feed your wires also looks very clean and hides a lot of potential cable mess, so if you do decide to plug in a lot of peripherals, this monitor has two HDMI ports, one display port, and four USB-A 3.0 ports, which is pretty solid arrangement for gamers. So you can connect multiple devices like your PS5, Xbox, or gaming PC all at once and switch between them anytime. Alright, so booting this up for the first time, my PS5 asked me to adjust the HDR until the on-screen symbol was barely visible. Alright, can you guys see that? Alright, that's better. Alright, perfect. So it's 3840 by 2160 VRR, uh, which stands for Variable Refresh Rate. Upon first glance, the text on this screen looks amazing. Everything looks really crystal clear and sharp. This is... <laughs> This is really nice. Here we have Gran Turismo 7. Let's jump into a uh, match real quick. All right, let's check out the audio quality on this real quick. Let me unmute. Ah. All right guys, this game is sounding really nice on these speakers. It's been a long time since I got monitors with built-in speakers and these sound great. I'm trying to gap this guy, it's 911 Turbo on my right. How are you faster than the Supra, bro? Come on, this is from 1981? I'm gonna break right here real quick. Oh, whoa, 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 you guys are crashing into me. <laughs> now here is a speaker test. I'm using the handy dandy remote to adjust the volume and it can get pretty loud. You can change the audio modes with their included presets, so I had a good time playing around with it. 
The mode I liked best was cinema, as it had enough bass and treble for immersive gaming content and experience. Cinema mode sounds the best, it's very immersive for me. Ooh, RCG. This is really, really bassy. I like this one too. It's shaking the table, actually. And as far as the display quality, I was impressed. The BenQ monitor is offering a fast 144Hz refresh rate and 1 millisecond response time, and I think it looks smooth and tear free with little to no ghosting while playing intense FPS games like the finals, which is very very popular right now. The developers behind this game were once part of DICE, the creators of my all time favorite Battlefield 3 and 4 so I do see a lot of similar characteristics like heavy destruction and evolution on the map. The best part about this game is that it's free to play and I'm literally like the best healer alright, you're gonna want me on your team cause I'm gonna save you. I'm just having a ton of fun with this with my friends right now so shout out to the developers for making this game feel very complete. I think they are listening to the community and that's very refreshing to hear in the gaming world nowadays. Other games like Spider-Man 2 looks very vivid and immersive on here as well. The display HDR 600 rating offers decent HDR performance thanks to a significantly higher peak brightness. These can also be configured through the bottom menu which the remote they give you is actually pretty handy. It just removes the unnecessary need of reaching down or behind uncomfortable places with our monitors. BenQ has their own light tuner feature which observes in-game illumination and decides how much detail to uncover by brightening up areas that were supposed to be bright but somehow became rendered as overly dark. So for games like Spider-Man 2 where I'm in a dark alleyway or something, those areas are lit up pretty well. Additionally, their black equalizer feature is also a real treat. Their technology looks at areas of the screen that are meant to be dark but turn out overly darkened when finally rendered. In a sense, this is the opposite of light tuner but the net result is similar. When it came to media consumption, the monitor looked even more fantastic. I played a couple of my videos right here, so this is me at a breakdancing competition that I went into. I pulled up some tech videos and wanted to see how those colors look like on there, and I've got to say, it looks very deep and powerful. So I think this monitor definitely complements my setup nicely and just adds to the overall vibe I was trying to go for. The last unique feature is a custom RGB accent light that can only be controlled manually through the monitor's menu. It gets bright enough and bounced off my wall a little which was nice as it added a nice ambient lighting to my room. So I think the setup is coming together really nicely. I've been meaning to use this desk space for the longest but couldn't really find a good monitor since. This is basically like a big TV sitting in my room all the time. I think I got kind of like a little man cave going on because I have my gaming PC right over there so if I'm editing or doing some work and all that, you know, I want to take a break, I'll just quickly switch over to this big guy. The Mobius gaming lineups including this one has a feature called the color shuttle which are color profiles which you can go down to your monitor at any time and switch amongst them. I wish it would have got a little bit brighter though. The viewing angles in my opinion aren't the best sometimes if I stare at this from the side or if I'm standing up. It does kind of look a little bit hazy. But overall, I'm pretty satisfied with it so I'm going to be keeping it in the setup for a long time. Anyways, what do you guys think about the setup? If some of you guys are wondering, we have the Red Bull fridge in the back. I don't really drink that much Red Bull. Just sometimes on rare occasions they're just kind of mainly there for show it does complete the look anyways that's all i got for today's video guys thank you so much for watching and until the next one i'll see ya then